Okay, um, welcome to the um, Make One Mechatronics session of the CC 2024. Uh, we will be uh, having three papers presented in this session. And uh, the first is going to be IoT based USB for water quality monitoring. And the speaker is uh, Mr. Mauro Alberto Lopez. Is like yeah. so, uh, uh, Mr. Mago. Uh, if you, if, if you, uh, if, if everything is okay, you can begin, please. Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Mauro Alberto, as you said, and I'm going to talk about the IoT-based USB for water quality monitoring. So let's start with the motivation. And here we have that water is crucial for human survival and the existence of all Earth species. Unfortunately, in last years, the presence of emerging contaminants in water sources, global climate change and anthropogenic activities have risen considerably. So nowadays it is considered of great importance to get water quality of different uh, sources monitored. Then we have that one of the United Nations objective is ensuring access to clean drinking water and enhance sanitation by 2030. Uh, here we have another uh, three points about uh, Mexico situation. And the very first one is restricted access to clean water, inadequate water quality, and significant public health challenges. And this happens especially in vulnerable communities. So it's of great importance to, to develop a project like, like this. Then we have the technology basis of this project. Uh, first of all, we have the Internet of Things or IoT that is revolutionizing how we monitor and manage various aspects of life, including monitoring recreation, drinking water, fishing, agriculture, industry, and environmental conditions, and in this case, focusing um, on water quality. This technology also facilitates the deployment of sensor-equipped systems to collect data on crucial water parameters, including pH, total dissolved solids, um, also known as TDS, and of course, temperature. In the other hand, we have the unmanned surface vehicles, also known as USV, that become that have become essential technologies for remote data acquisition, offering rapid and precise methods for water quality monitoring. And the term USV, uh, well, uh, a brief uh, reference about this is that it's uh, when we talk about this topic. We refer to boats or ships operating on the surface or subsurface of water bodies without human operators within the vehicle. Consequently, uh, the main aim of this project is to develop a USB outfitted with sensors capable of measuring the parameters before mentioned that are uh, pH levels, TDAs, and temperature to monitor water quality effectively. Uh, this way, we are going to use the IoT and the USB will transmit the collected data to a local server. This data will be managed through a user-friendly graphical interface, providing functionalities for controlling the USB and enabling real-time monitoring of the water quality monitoring. Then here I present the system functionality diagram, where we'll be able to see the overview of the whole project. Initially, an unmanned surface vehicle USB that is uh, present in the circle in the blue circle was equipped with a control system powered by the ESP32 DevKit V1 development board that incorporated three sensors: uh, the pH1, TDS, and temperature one, uh, a battery bank, and of course a pair of actuators that allow it to move in all directions on the surface in the body of water. 
Subsequently, a computer hosts uh, the server receiving data captured by the USB, and this part is marked with the green circle in the green circle right here. Uh, this computer also includes a graphical interface for data management where real time monitoring of the capture parameters is possible, as well as controlling the vehicle and capturing information in the database. This database is generated from the graphical interface and is stored in an Excel file format in the cloud. That is the third element of this diagram that can be seen in the orange circle where future queries of the monitor data can be conducted. Additionally, this data can be used to generate graphs to observe the behavior of the sampled parameters. Here we can see the bidirectional communication using the Modbus TCP IP uh, protocol to send water parameters from the USB to the PC and to send uh, the commands to get direction to the USB from the PC to the USB. Let's continue with the next. Uh, here we have the sensors and calibration. Specialized solutions called buffers were employed to characterize uh, the pH sensor. A linear trend was observed, so a linear regression was performed to determine the slope and the y-intercept for the full pH scale. Here we can see the circles that represent the data sampling and the line that represents the calibration curve, as well as the equation y-pH that represents the, the behavior of this curve. In the other hand, we have the data sampling and calibration curve for the TDS sensor. In this case, uh, the measured voltage values showed a non-linear trend, so we use a cubic interpolation polynomial for the calibration curve. Here we can see the circles for the sample for the sampling data and the calibration curve as the line. Then we have the data acquisition and control, where we can see that the first step to acquire data was reading analog pins, then uh, converting the the data converting the data into a digital, getting the temperature, storing uh, that information in RAM, and then uh, using a delay of 10 milliseconds. And after that, we have the diagram of steering control, where we can see all the variables necessary to get uh, or to control the, the vehicle. Uh, we are going to go with the vehicle design, uh, where we can see, uh, uh, well, before I uh, mentioned the, the propeller, I'd like to, to say that to develop the USB, an extensive review was conducted on aquatic vehicles. Uh, this way, we drew inspiration from aquatic rover and catamaran designs. Uh, in this way, we obtained an innovative non-open access hybrid design of our own, whose CAD render model is depicted right here in the slide. And in the right of, of this slide, we can see the, the propeller design plan. It's important to mention that it has uh, uh, an angle of 35 degrees, enhancing movement and minimizing, minimizing water splashing. Additionally, their design provides extra protection against dirt and water exposure. This protection is accomplished through the inner wall of each uh, each blade, like we can see uh, in the in the render model. So it, it's one of the highlights of of this design. Then uh, we go to the implementation. Uh, to implement this this design, we tested uh, in a local lagoon, and here we can see the location for the points of interest of the USB. Then we have the remote control of the USB from the graphical interface, where we can see also a window, a floating window that shows uh, the camera and our design uh, working in a body of water. This is because we use a smartphone using a remote desktop to control the USB. And here, 
uh, I'm going to show you this uh, short video where we can see our project uh, running, uh, navigating in a in a body of water. Uh, here we can see that both propellers are uh, working together. Then here we have the just one propeller uh, working to turn in one direction the USB uh, monitoring the parameters. And then we'll have another uh, short part of the video that shows how one propeller is working to, to change the direction. And the last part when the USB is coming back to the shore and finish the water quality monitoring. So here we have the evidence on how we implement this project. To go to this part, samples were collected over three days to verify the functionality of acquisition system and the developed vehicle. During this period, constant conditions were maintained, meaning that the same points of interest were monitored at the same time. So here we have the first graph, that is the temperature graph that show us information in a whole hour, in, in an hour. So we can see that uh, the water bodies are thermally stable, which is crucial for aquatic ecosystems. The narrow temperature bar variations indicate a high specific heat capacity. It means that even when there are uh, other changes about temperature in the external environment, water is, is uh, remaining the same. Then we have the graph of, of pH. And in this, uh, in this part, we use um, an interval of five minutes to get a greater detail of the information. Here we can see uh, two different uh, levels of pH mainly highly uh, basic to for the day uh, 29 in February and uh, the day 4th of March. And uh, a neutral uh, le uh, reading for the 5th of March. Then we have the TTS graph that shows consistent trends on uh, on those two days, the 29th of February and the 5th of March, while we are having uh, the the deep or lower uh, reads in in March 4th. Uh, well, this way uh, we can uh, make some uh, conclusions because uh, considering the TDS index we can say that water meets the World Health Organization and Mexican standards for TDS, but it's not recommendable for human consumption due to high pH uh, and turbidity levels. And it's quite important to mention that it's important to consider another fact that could affect the uh, water quality. This includes uh, presence of microbiological contaminants, heavy metals, uh, nitrates, nitrates, uh, and so on. Uh, therefore, this study is limited to only uh, three parameters, as can be seen in this uh, last part. And the use of uh, well, the control is required for for the for the USB. Uh, then we have also advancements uh, to to mention real time tracking and management through IoT was possible. The USB steering control with an interface was done uh, correctly, effectively, and TDS index-based water quality was defined. But as we mentioned, it is important to consider another uh, factors. And finally, uh, we have the an hybrid design based in aquatic rubber and catamaran was, was done. Here we can mention another um, future potential or opportunities for improvement of this project that uh, includes integration with additional sensors to get more information about uh, more um, parameters and 
modules to activate alarms or purification systems or, or so on. Finally, we have uh, the idea to integrate a uh, GPS to automate the monitoring route. This way, uh, this way, uh, it's not going to be necessary anymore to control the USB from the user interface. And that's it. Well, thank you, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. We have time for one question. Send me one yes. question. Well, uh, in the conclusions, you said that uh, you are uh, limited to three parameters. You can only measure three parameters. Uh, this restriction is uh, is imposed uh, because of the hardware or what? Well, in fact, uh, the restriction is well could be changed because the hardware is capable to get more more, for example, analogic uh, ints. Uh, so, uh, just for this uh, project, particularly for this project. It was uh, decided to use just that uh, three parameters that, in fact, we can determine uh, another parameters indirectly. For example, the TDS information give us enough data to to approximate the turbidity indexes, the conductivity indexes, and in terms of the pH uh, sensor, uh, we can determine or define the concentration of ammonium too. So just for this uh, project, uh, it was considered to use the most common uh, parameters used in IoT. But yes, it, it, it can be, uh, well, we can add uh, more, more, more sensors, for example. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mauro. Now it's the turn uh, for Mr. Carlos Ernesto Vasquez to speak. Um, Excuse me, doctor. We have three minutes. Two minutes left. As all you can. Yes, I can. Yeah, Carlos, can you hear us? You now are moderator and you can present your or share your screen with your presentation, Perfect. please. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me well? Yes, loud and clear. Perfect. So let me share my screen. And let me present you. The next paper is titled Navigation a 3D Virtual Environment under Continuous of Robot Guidance, a preliminary study. Okay. And the speaker is going to be Mr. Carlos Ernesto Vasquez Garcia. So uh, you will have uh, up to 15 minutes for your presentation. 
and we will uh, reset five minutes uh, questions at the end of your talk. Uh, please go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Can can you see my my presentation? No. Uh, no. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I have shared it, but I don't know why. Let me share it again. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's right. You, you can see it. Yes. Yes, we can see. Perfect. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm Ernesto Vasquez. I'm a PhD student, uh, part of the Robotics and Advanced Manufacturing Group at Simvestop Saltillo. Uh, well, I'm going to show you a preliminary study for navigation in a 3D virtual environment under continuum software of the guidance. So, uh, well, just as a quick uh, abstract from this uh, result, the main problem that we're tackling here is how to convey safely 3D directional cues with an active deformable device to assist in navigation tasks as other assistive schemes. As this problem, as you can see in the video, involves human in the loop, well, we need to uh, perform some uh, a hypothesis that the volunteers could per perceive directional cues given the continuous of robot to be guided in an inside an unknown environment. And you know, well, we hypothesize that it will be as effective as a visual guidance scheme. So our solution is to design and control a, a continuous of robot as a soft handle that could provide five directions clues and will be then compared to common visual guidance. So our results uh, show us that our proposal uh, complies indeed with as a preliminary alternative solution to the problem. So through this presentation, first I'm going to give you some motivation and the current state of the art of uh, visual guidance using soft robots. Then I'm going to present you the methods that we use to, to validate this experiment. And finally, the results that we obtained with some discussions and conclusions. So, uh, well, 3D navigation guidance has been commonly uh, used uh, via uh, visual cues when, for example, we use our GPS to locate some unknown uh, specific uh, locations. But uh, when we're dealing with some uh, places like undergrounds or buildings that where GPS we, uh, cannot be uh, useful, uh, we need to search for some alternatives also to ensure inclusivity, for example, for visual impairment people. So in this regard, haptic devices have been uh, used to uh, uh, have, have it used in uh, for 3D navigation guidance. Uh, specifically, they have been used via rebodied re robots. But the usage the usage of rebodied robots uh, raises some concerns about the safety uh, when when dealing with human interaction. So in this regard, uh, con continuum soft robots, specifically pneumatic continuum soft robot, has properties such as compliance and adaptability that makes them ideal for safe human interaction. One example, and the one that we use, is seen here in theory one. But in literature to this day, few continuum soft robots have been used uh, studied for haptic interface. Uh, we have seen, for example, a 2D soft actor that was placed in the wrist of the people to via shear forces uh, transmit some directional cues uh, to the people. Also, some other continuum soft robots have been used to control, to teleoperate a, uh, some other robot via passive stiffness. And other solutions have been uh, published, but in the hands of only uh, one directional stimuli being given, which is not what we need when we are dealing with 3D navigation. So it's uh, we need clear and precise software and stimuli uh, to convey in, in a safe way specific directions by controlling actively the deformation and coordinates of these continuums of robots. In this regard, our solution, uh, our proposal was to design a and control a continuous of robot to convey directional cues 
the experimental setup, you can see, see it here in figure two, when we basically have two main components, which is the soft robot, uh, which is a handheld uh, uh, took by, by, the, by the volunteer, and it's equipped with three control inputs to deform the soft body, and then with that, we convey your directional cues. And we have a head mounting display, which provides a fully immersive 3D environment, which was the Oculus system. Well, as, as this robot, as we need to uh, obtain the coordinates of these robots, we needed to do some approximation. A common literature approximation is the constant curvature approach, which leads us to 3D formation coordinates, which are depicted in this, in this picture, uh, which are the deforma deformation length, the curvature, and the azimuth angle. Also, the the model, the dynamics of this of this robot is modeled via a uh, like integral Lagrangian system that is is similar to those of the rigid bodies, but each of the dynamic terms are based on a density variation uh, field and also a varying cent center of mass. Also, there's there's a control input that is mapped via an input matrix, and uh, well, when it's multiplied by the by the pressure vector. So the pneumatic control that we implemented was basically a computer torque plus a PD term to track a desired trajectory by designing the input pressure. When we solve the the dynamics for the desired pressure, we have the following equation. Oh, of course, uh, this is a common a common in in books uh, control, but any other control from the plethora of, of controller system can be uh, implemented. But in, in regard of, of simplicity and to focus on the results, we implemented a computer torque plus a PD term. So this controller provides a directional cue by conveying actively controlled directional motion towards a desired uh, azimuth while maintaining uh, a desired length and curvature for all the, uh, all the four, four cues. So, Basically, we have five directional cues. We have the front, left, back, right, and up directions, which can be seen uh, in figure four. These are real uh, real positions of the end effector of the soft robot. But, uh, well, just to uh, clarify, we, we put the neutral configuration of the robot 10 millimeters above the initial length when the deformation begins to work around with complex dynamics of pressure and depressurizing actions. The 3D virtual environment, basically, it was a two-story house plan with eight rooms of six by six meters, as we can see in this picture, where the participants experience this virtual house plan through the head mountain display headset. Oh, the left handheld of the controller of the Oculus system was used to move uh, within an, this immersive virtual environment. The task was to first uh, navigate within the unknown virtual building and to, uh, to cross across six rooms where participants were guided to find a hidden object, which can be seen here in figure 7.8. Uh, basically, there were folders. So after grabbing this object, participant has to move, had to move to the center of the room and reorient themselves as this avatar uh, indicates. And finally, the task ended when all, the participant collected all the five hidden objects and placed them on a tray in the, in the last room. This performance was evaluated via three main metrics, which were the task duration, the travel distance, and the average speed in the virtual scenario which were recorded at 50 hertz. So we also uh, calculated the directional accuracy rate to evaluate the precision of navigation in, in each of the conditions that I'm going to present later. Just to clarify that the travel distance was calculated offline using an Euclidean, di the Euclidean distance. And note that the only planar travel distance is computed as upward movement is represented by uh, a direction in an elevator. So it is consistent for all participants, and uh, this distance does not vary in each floor. So we have three conditions. The first one was only haptic stimulus, 
Uh, the second one was uh, visual directional guidance, and as, as we can see here in figure 8.B, where some uh, arrows were, were indicating the, the hidden object, this was used as a ground truth. And we have a third condition where we mix both haptic and visual, vis, visual um, conditions. So the experiment basically was performed in, for six volunteers where the head mounted display was first adjusted to their head and they were positioned uh, to ensure a match within the virtual reference frame. Also, before starting the experiment, volunteers completed a dummy trial and also uh, well, uh, the, each of the conditions were took by each participant in random order. And finally, a five minute pause was given after each execution of the task. So what we obtained is that uh, almost all of the participants follow a similar trajectory within the three conditions. Uh, the ideal condition can be seen here in figure 10.a, while the, the obtained trajectory for one volunteer is here in, in figure uh, V. So it is observed that a haptic stimulus alone or together with visual stimulus allowed participants uh, to follow similar trajectories. But regarding the metrics, well, we did some repeated measures on NOVA and some post hoc tests to, uh, that indicate us that visual experimental condition was significantly shorter compared to other two conditions it was found that 90, uh, it was 90% slower with the haptic stimulus and 60% slower with the combined stimuli, uh, which uh, compared to the speed achieved with the visual stimulus, as we can see here in these graphs, where the time for the haptic stimulus was bigger and the speed was lower compared to other conditions, but the travel distance uh, was similar to uh, in the three conditions. Uh, this, this is marked by the accuracy rate uh, from the repeated measures and other tests. So, well, some discussions uh, is that no middle level closed loop was used. Uh, then therefore some eff effects due to non-linearities of the continuous soft road were present. However, as the five directional cues were highly contrasting, we were able to achieve uh, this, this perception even though the algorithm does not guarantee high precision in practice. But if we want to uh, add some compound directions, for example, at 45 degrees, we will need a robust controller uh, to well, de deal with these non-linearities. So in conclusions, our contribution relies on the experimental testbed and the analysis of directional clues throughout the control 3D continuous of robot body. Uh, the comparison is obtained versus common visual guidance, and we demonstrated that the effectiveness of our proposal that complies as a preliminary result uh, to the solution of conveying safely the uh, 3D directional cues to people. Uh, well, uh, as we expected also, the time required to perform the task increases when keeping only the haptic stimulus, and this is because the time that we, we well, the vis visual cues are instantly detected by us, but haptic stimulus takes time to, to be detected, and also the time that takes the soft robot to, to convey, that, convey to that direction. Well, these results invites to fulfill further research uh, to discuss formally haptics through soft robots. Directional cues must be transformed into force control and some variables that just like the just noticeable difference in haptics must be obtained to know the the specific angle that we need we we need to uh, to apply in, in order to to perceive a difference and that will be all uh, th thank you all for your attention thank you very much is there anyone who would like to ask a question Okay, uh, Mr. Carlos. Uh, yes. Uh, so the soft robot here is, uh, you said it, it was a pneumatic uh, kind of actuator. Uh, and this actuator can uh, shape, well, take different shapes. 
Uh, but how can you control these the shapes that this this soft robot uh, can take? Uh, I mean, uh, you said that uh, you have like uh, six six clues. Uh, is is this because the robot can only uh, uh, perform these uh, six? Uh, is this uh, exactly? Is yeah. it because the robot can only bend in those particular shapes, or just because? Uh, for your experiment that you required to be uh, to be so yeah it, it just it was just for the experiment this robot can uh, deformate in in well, a 3d special uh, configuration with no restrictions we have the specific position of the robot well physically it it has an envelope uh well a workspace of like a semisphere uh, which is limited by the pressure deformation maps and the uh, limitations for our ex of our uh, mechatronic testbed, but we we surely can do more. Uh, uh, well, we we can fulfill more directions with with this with this robot. Okay. Uh, in in that regard, um, you mentioned that you are not implementing uh, directly. Uh, some sort of control uh, in these experiments uh, that you perform for this work, but um, is it possible to uh, to measure the, the the shape that the that the soft robot is taking? Uh, if it is possible, uh, which kind of sensor or in which way it could be achieved? Yes, actually, that's that's one of the main problem with this uh, robotic system, soft robotic system, because when we add some sensor, uh, we are modifying the dynamics of the robot, because it, it, most of the sensors are rigid. So in that hence, we work around that problem by, uh, as you can see, these markers, these uh, gray markers, are uh, obtained. Well, the, the position of them, those markers are obtained with a visual system. So uh, we obtain the end of, uh, the distal point, the final point of the robot, and then we transform it via inverse kinematics to the generalized coordinates of the robot. But indeed, if you, if you want to measure the real shape of the robots, you need some soft uh, sensors, which is currently in development in the state of the art. There have been some workarounds, but this is one of the most uh, acceptable uh, workarounds for this for this estimation of the of the coordinates. So it's uh, by using these uh, visual markers that you uh, estimate the position of the and the shape that the robot is taking. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. Well, uh, is there any other question? Well, we thank uh, we thank very much, Mr. Carlos Ernesto. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi. Mm, hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, we, we will present. Uh, uh, we will present you, Mr. Daniel Galvan Perez. That correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the next uh, work we presented uh, in this session is titled Integration of Virtual Vibration Absorbers in UAV Motion Control Design for Monitoring Civil Structures in Damp Engineering. And the speaker is going to be Mr. Daniel Galvan Perez. Mr. Daniel, you will have uh, up to 15 minutes to make your presentation and we will reserve five minutes at the end uh, to make room for questions. You, okay. you may begin. Sorry? You may begin. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> the name of this work is the integration of virtual vibration absorbers in UAV motion control design for monitoring civil structures in dam engineering. Here in the 21st International Conference on Electric Engineering, Computing Science, and Automatic Control. My name is Daniel Galvan Perez. I'm the presenter from this work. Um, the work team is composed by Dr. Hugo Yanez Badillo, Dr. Francisco Beltran Carvajal, and Dr. Ivan Rivas Campbell. In this paper, we explore the innovative use of virtual vibration absorbers in the motion control systems of unmanned aerial vehicles for the monitoring of civil structures such as dam engineering. Here are three main aspects. First is the integration of virtual vibration absorbers for the stability during the flight from unmanned aerial vehicles. Second one is the enhanced data collection accuracy, which is crucial for dam monitoring. Um, some of the key contributions, it is an improved motion control design and numerical simulations. In this sense, uh, we start with the introduction. Um, we in the civil structures are includes dams, buildings, bridges, tunnels, and water management systems. All of these structures are very important of monitoring because we need real time data. Why we need real time data? It is essential to detect the structural damages early and ensure safety. Uh, but we have some challenges in dam engineering that, uh, for example, difficult terrain, uh, access restrictions. These challenges make manual inspections risky and time consuming. So the role of unmanned aerial vehicles is that these kind of robotic systems are capable of performing detailed continuous monitoring in inaccessible or dangerous locations. So I think the focus of this research is that is designing an unmade aerial vehicle motion control system with virtual vibration absorbers. We seek to improve precision, efficiency, and safety during dam inspections. In this sense, we define the following problem. We have a key challenge, which is when main aerial vehicles experience disturbances during flight. Um, some examples can be wind, can be vibrations, can be um, the, 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 the environment, etc. In this sense, we propose an approach to, solution, to give a solution to that key challenge which is the integration of virtual vibration absorbers to dampen these disturbances online. What is our expected outcome? We expect enhanced unmade aerial vehicle stability, ensuring high quality data collection for the monitoring of dam infrastructures. And why, are, why we are interested in monitoring dams? Well, this is because these critical infrastructures are 
susceptible to failure due to undetected structural issues, making consistent monitoring essential. Um, in this sense, we can start the methodology part with the quadrotor motion equations. And in main direct vehicle, also called quadrotor, has the three expressions in the equation number one, which describe the forces and torques acting on the quadrotor during its flight. So the forces are generated by the motors and affected by the, by the unmanned aerial vehicle's motion. So this motion is affected in the X, Y, and Z coordinates. From the other side, we have the torques. The torques regulate the rotational motion of the unmanned aerial vehicle and its orientation, or the, the, the also called Euler angles, yaw, pitch, and roll. So in this sense, we need a model because it is crucial to implement the con uh, control system that can have some knowledge about the physical plant. So the main importance of the modeling is that we can give to the motion control system some idea to the physical plant. So we can see in the figure the quadrotor dynamics diagram as as I can, as I talk in the previous slide, the orientation of the rotorcraft is described by the Euler angles. Uh, now we go with the virtual vibration absorbers. These are dynamic absorbers, dynamic vibration absorbers that can suppress unknown external harmonic forces and are based on the mathematical model presented in equation number two. These virtual vibration absorbers are used to dampen disturbances online, enhancing the stability of the unmade aerial vehicle during its flight. So the adjustments are made dynamically to account for the change in the environmental factor that can affect the flight of the unmade aerial vehicle. Like can be wind, can be vibrations, can be obstacles, etc. In this point, is it, it is important to, to note that the optimal operation of the virtual vibration absorbers depends on the absorber's tuning frequency, which is dynamically updated based on these conditions, based on the conditions of flight of the quadrotor. Now, the integration of the virtual vibration absorbers in the motion control of the unmade aerial vehicles is in this slide. The motion control ensure a stable flight path by adjusting the thrust, the yaw, the pitch, and the roll of the quadrotor based on the online data. So in this sense, the system is adjusting its control inputs dynamically in function of the external conditions. In this sense, we can maintain the flight path of the quadrotor accurately. Um, but why we need to, to have the flight path accurately? Well, because we need these kind of robotic systems in the navigation and monitoring tasks. We have some challenges in navigations, um, specifically in the dam engineering, the unmade aerial vehicles must navigate complex environments like dams, like water management systems, like the, all the civil structures that I mentioned in the beginning. So uh, structures, water bodies, etc. To tackle this challenge, we proposed the use of a rapidly exploring random tree path planning algorithm. With this technique, we can help that the you that the unmade aerial vehicle find its optimal path online during its flight. In this sense, we can propose a monitoring task. Uh, we need that the unmade aerial vehicle continuously assesses the dam structural hill using onboard sensors. These kind of sensors can be thermographic, can be lidar, can be cameras, can be voltage sensor, etc. It depends a lot of the monitoring task. So here, the, the main contribution is that we can 
path, the planning of the quadrotor online, and we can make a continuous monitoring, ensuring in this way um, comprehensive dam inspections without any human intervention. Um, so in this work, we present two study cases to validate the proposed first case study, the vibration attenuation. In this scenario, we propose that the unmade aerial vehicle is subjected to external disturbances, wind vibration. So we apply the following disturbances. We apply forces on the X and Y axis, and we apply torques to each axis. So the result, the, the main finding is that virtual vibration observers successfully mitigated all the external forces and in this way maintain the unmade aerial vehicles vehicle stability during during the flight. So in the figure we can see the the error and the x, y, and z axis without and with the virtual vibration observers. The disturbances are injected in the at the 20 seconds. So we can see in the first uh, graph that from 20 seconds to 50 seconds, that is, that is the end of the simulation, the X and Y axis are oscillating a lot, um, in very unstable. In cooperation with the compensated response with the virtual vibration absorbers, that in less of 10 seconds, um, normalize the error, the position error of the quad rotor. In the second study case, we present um, a navigation path planning with the objective to represent a real world application. So in, in, this, in this scenario, the main aerial vehicles navigates a dam environment, avoiding some obstacles while it is inspecting critical in critical structures. So as uh, said previously, we use the rapid random, rapidly exploring random tree algorithm to planning the path and to help the unmade aerial vehicle to find its flight path through complex environments online. As we can see in the figure, the performance of the quadrotor robotic system was able to come the what rotor system was able to complete the inspection task efficiently, even in the presence of obstacles, which are um, which are signaled with the yellow yellow lines in the first figure. The second figure present the path in the x and y axis from the what rotor system. Uh, we have some conclusions. The first one is the virtual vibration absorbers. We integrate vir virtual vibration absorbers into the motion control system of main aerial vehicles, significantly improving stability and performance in disturbed environments. In this sense, we can enhance the monitoring tasks with the unmade aerial vehicles. Why? The unmade aerial vehicles' ability to monitor dam infrastructures on online is greatly enhanced with this improved motion control design and the integration of path planning algorithms. In future work, we are focused on experimental implementations and further analysis of forced vibrations across multiple frequencies. So um, in a general way, this research contributes to the growing field of unmade aerial vehicles based structural health monitoring, providing a practical solution, um, I think a simple solution for enhancing the safety and efficiency of critical infrastructure inf inspections. And that's all for me. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Daniel, for your presentation. Um, we have as room for questions. Is there anyone here in the room or online who would like to ask a question? I stand up.
Okay. So, um, uh, hello, Daniel. I I have a question about your further work. That uh, you mentioned that you do you use um, multiple frequencies uh, for a uh, future work. So I want I want to ask you if uh, what kind of uh, frequencies do you do you try to implement in that future work? It's a very interesting question. Um, I'll be honest with you. This is a new, a new, a new line of application of these robotic systems. So we, so in the development of all of this work, uh, we are uh, analyzing um, which kind of frequencies, because the frequencies it depends a lot of the real disturbance, right? We want to characterize some per, some disturbances that can model real life um, events, real life catastrophes um, that can affect the performance of the of the quadrotor. So we are in this. So we are in the analysis. We don't have um, a specific answer. All I can say is that the frequencies depend on the external phenomena that we mm, we want to prove the robustness of the motion control against that phenomena. Thank you. Steve, any other question? Well, um, I would like to ask uh, about the RRT uh, algorithm. Uh, yeah. This algorithm, uh, you mentioned that uh, it finds the path uh, that the vehicle must uh, follow uh, by itself. Uh, yeah. But how is this accomplished? Because you, um, you have to give the initial point and the destination or uh, you have to specify in a sort of map the, uh, the path you like this vehicle to follow or uh, which parameters uh, are required um yeah in this case with the path planning algorithms um we give the initial position the final position and we we give to the algorithm the map of the of the environment that we want to 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 go with the robot. So in this sense, we every algorithm has its own parameters. For example, with this RRT algorithm, it's only that the beginning, the ending, the map. Um, with this map and the two points, the algorithm can calculate the optimal path um, because of its in internal structure can avoid ob some obstacles. Okay, so um, I uh, uh, I don't know. I I, I think that. Uh, uh, the destination point is where the task uh, is, the task at hand is, is going to be uh, located. Right. Yeah. So uh, it is not taking, uh, it is not moni monitoring the, the structure along its path only in the final point of the trajectory. Um, sorry? Uh, can you repeat the question? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, the 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 vehicle is not taking a continuous uh, monitoring data. It only takes that data at the end of the trajectory. All right, I, I understand. Yeah, sorry. It, well, it depends a lot because. Um, our approach is only to enhance the motion control system, but the monitoring task depends 
about which kind of sensors the robotic system has in its in its zone, right? Because if he, for example, if he only has cameras, he it can detect um, some patterns depending on the specific task. If he has some voltage or current sensors, maybe robotic system can fly um, along um, electric power systems, for example. It depends a lot of the task, of the monitoring task. Uh, our approach is only focused on the enhancing of the motion control system. Okay, because uh, the conditions while the robot is moving uh, will will change uh, with respect uh, to the conditions when the robot is just hovering on a, on a position. Uh, that's why I was asking, but um, well, I guess that canceling vibration is actually a very good idea uh, because because of the importance of the of the infrastructure that it is. Uh, well, you are working with. Uh, so uh, I don't know if anyone else would like to ask another question. Well, uh, we give you thanks, Mr. Uh, Daniel. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, it's going to be everything for this session. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the participation. I'm very glad to be in the CCE. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.